Next up, we have somebody that many of you will know. Uh, I like to call him Truth Bomb Tony, but really that's a bit rude. His name's Tony Lecantro. He's an investment advisor with Alto Capital. Known Tony for some years. Some of you will have seen him at our gold conferences in the past. And one thing I will tell you about Tony, he is nothing but tells the truth. And when we're investing in gold equities, sometimes we need to be told the truth because there's a lot of potential misinformation out there. There is a lot of social media saying, buy this, buy that. But I've asked Tony to come on and talk to us today about what we need to look for when investing in precious metal stocks. Because you can do very well, but it can also go the other way. And by the way, this is not investment advice. Please do your own research and check with your financial planner. Tony Lacantro, great to see you. Welcome to the Virtual Gold Conference. Last keynote presentation of the day. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with you know, your title, what to look for when investing in precious metal stocks. We've got a lot of people here from all over the world. We've heard from a lot of the ASX listed mining companies on the program. What is it that you look for or how do you advise your clients on what to look for when investing? Wow, what, what an all-encompassing, holistic question, Kerry. And uh, I'll never forget the moment at your gold conference at Luna Park when a, a ferry went past called Sirius and Jake Klein was saying the medium-sized gold sector of Australia was about to launch a comeback. And, you know, that, that was just an awesome time. And uh, those conferences, we had a lot of fun, but now we're, we're Zooming it. So what I look for in a gold stock is coming through past history. And I want to make it clear that even during around the tech bubble, uh, the gold price was $251 US. Oh, and really? We still, yeah, we still had a vibrant gold sector and you could still make money out of gold stocks. So what, what I've found is look, look for the exploration potential who has the potential for the ounces, the country risk, and the, the chance of drilling into a jewellery shop? I mean, who has that high-grade potential to go in and one big drill hole that, that will change everything? And also what I've learned is, you know, I've learned a lot from what Bill Beam has done at Northern Star, and I'm trying to find the next star or rock stars in the gold sector but to me, it's about advising for 23 years, getting to know the people, watching some success and, and how these people have built companies. Yeah, there's a, and on today's conference, we've got a lot of people, we've got hundreds of people from all over the world. Some are very sophisticated one, investors I know, because I've seen some of the, uh, the registrations. Some people are, uh, are geologists by background. So some of them will know this. But I think as we get into... Um, sort of, I guess, bubbly territory, there's people coming in that really have, are not sophisticated investors. How would you advise them? Uh, is it management? Is it uh, uh, prior um, investor knowledge? I mean, how would you teach them the best way to get, just to get started? Well, I think, I think you've got to look at, at the major producers for starters. And I think that's, that's a good place to, to throw some money, then look towards the mid caps, and then I'd address the corporate activity, uh, what's happened with Apollo and some, some other gold stocks. So if you look at who has done what corporate-wise, you'll start to learn pretty quick. But unfortunately, new investors just tend to jump on the bandwagon. They'll have some success and they'll think it's easy. But you do have to do the hard yards in the gold sector. But the good thing is, Kerry, is a lot of these stocks are still cheap relative to the gold price and where this sector could head. And that's what I wanted to ask you about today. It's been a very unloved sector. I mean, the, the stock market's not unloved, but uh, precious metals, gold and silver, um, some have done very well. Uh, I'm not saying it's, it's a sector that's been dead, but it's certainly uh, not been uh, something a lot of people are looked at. But I think it's coming back into favour. The, the gold price... I was talking to um, Egon von Greyes um, earlier and um, Egon was talking about how it's wealth preservation rather than, uh, and that's the physical, investing in physical gold, physical silver. That's wealth preservation, it's not investing. But gold equities, that's investing, isn't it? That's 
putting in, <coughs> excuse me, I've been talking too long today. <laughs> um, uh, that That is uh, putting some money in, hoping for a return. That's very different from wealth preservation. Oh, certainly. That's where the real cheesecake is. And this is where you can make multiples on your money. And, we, you know, what, what's happened with the bandwagon jumpers is a lot of other sectors you cannot value. Hydrogen, lithium, anything ending in IUM, which will <laughs> shortly be Imodium. Investors can't value it. So they tend, everything gets huge market caps, whereas the gold sector, you can probably easily value it on ounces in the ground. There's very little in the way of corporate activity premiums. So I think the sector is too simple to look at until we see some stupidity. And that's why there's a lot of good value out there. And we're going to see a lot more corporate activity and companies that can get a million ounces of quality gold, of quality gold, they're going to be valued between eighty and hundred million dollars plus. And with the takeover of Apollo, we've seen almost two hundred million dollars ascribed to just over a million ounces. So the the stupidity will come. But at the moment, gold gold and silver equities are too sensibly priced. Uh, when you say they're too sensibly priced, is that because there hasn't been enough attention? When you say too sensibly priced, what do you mean by that? There just hasn't been any wild speculation. So what I'm thinking is uh, speculators, those on social media, are more excited about these exotic sectors uh, okay. that will not produce anything apart from broken dreams and brokerage. So, you know, the last really big gold bubble, I think you'd have to go back to 1978, 1980, wow. when prices went absolutely insane. And I think even the true gold and silver believers probably can't fathom um, stupidity in prices. Yet, you know, look at, look at where the world is. Um, I, I think that stupidity is going to come, Kerry. So... We're talking here in uh, you know 18th of November 2021. Uh, so you think now is a good time for people, for our investor audience that are sitting out there. We've had a number of companies presenting today. Uh, we've got another couple uh, coming coming forward. Uh, what, what have we got? Alice Queen, Golden Rim, and, and Barton Gold. Uh, before we head into the Zoom networking, which I don't think you can join us to, with because you're very busy today. But. Yeah. Um, it, do you think now is a good time? You said that it's a, it's a, it's not as crazy as the hydrogens and the other sectors. You think that gold is more easy to, uh, to value? Is that what you're suggesting for investors? I think the stocks really ha have done done bugger all, and there's lots of value there. In at the moment, where market caps, you can buy some of these stocks for around ten million dollar market caps, and not only are you getting ounces in the ground but you're getting exploration potential as well. So I think, you know, the sector is probably fairly priced at the moment. And a lot of stocks I still think have multiple upside potential because the flood of stupid money is nowhere near it at the moment. I think, um, you know, people are chasing whatever's sexy and that, that extends to crypto. It extends to all these other stocks where there's a, there's a money flow and there's trading activity. So what, what I've been saying to my clients is, look, let's buy these stocks on the back foot and eventually value will be realised. So I, I think still, even though the gold price is starting to perform, the equities are undervalued relative to the gold price. Yeah, and how, what would you say? You're a broker. What would you say to people that are looking at this and going, well, I, we've heard about physical gold and physical silver today. Um, how would you describe it with uh, a way to make money? Is it the leverage, the gold price is, you know, you pick the right stock. You can also pick the wrong stock. Um, how do you go about mitigating your risk in gold equities? Or should I say precious metals? Because it's also silver. Oh, for sure. Um, I guess you, you back management. Uh, you do the back of the envelope calculation where you value gold in the ground at $40 to $100 an ounce. You look at the jurisdiction. You look at, is this, my, is this deposit a chance of being mined? So you really have to research into it. But if you look at where some of the producers were, like your Northern Stars, uh, Newcrest Re and Regis, you'll see that the sector has been in the doldrums.
but we do have an emerging uh, mid-tier sector coming through as well. But for me, there's lots of stocks that are, uh, there's a few stocks under three cents that I'd certainly be buying at the moment, Kerry. Uh, okay, well, we won't go into those just yet, not unless they're the ones that are on my program, but we, look, I don't want to pick yeah. any particular ones out today. You mentioned earlier a little bit of um, uh, uh, M&A action out there. Do you think that uh, that's also a way that, uh, I, I guess, investors might come into a smaller company and then that there will be a merger uh, acquisitions. Do you think that that's on the horizon in, in the coming year as some of these get gobbled up and that potentially can be a good thing for shareholders? I think, I think um, early takeovers are a bit of a double-edged sword because, you know, whilst you get the exit normally above what you paid for it, the potent, you know, you're sort of being taken out at an early stage and if you look at the battle for Apollo between Gold Road and Romilius, there was certainly some interest there. And I think that that, that area will, will come into vogue where the majors will say, hey, look, we're not replenishing our, ans our answers. Let's look towards the juniors. And you've seen that um, with the likes of Gascoigne, Dacian and, and some other companies. So I, I think M&A will come to the fore, but you know, the gold sector is full of egos. So often it's the <laughs> corporate activity that comes once prices get out of control. In terms of uh, a stock that, you, that you're looking at, do you prefer gold, silver, or are you agnostic? Totally agnostic. Uh, I'm an advisor who will look at opportunities that simply make clients money. I, I still think that the way the world is, owning precious metals, uh, physical is certainly worthwhile and then you can look at the stocks so I still think that a lot of these gold and silver stocks won't mine anything but the multiple upside certainly exists in the gold and and silver juniors as it always has I have to make mention of this Tony you didn't see it but your beautiful dog just went outside came back in did all these things around the curtain gotta love zoom ladies and gentlemen what sort of dog was that that came past it's a bit of this, bit of that. Um, he's he's ten years old now, so uh, he's just really a couch potato. But yeah, I, I you know, obviously I'm in a one bedroom unit, so um, he needs he needs his room. So anyway, yeah, God bless, God bless soon. All right, so God bless him. Um, let's let's do some quick advice uh, on uh, how to pick stocks in this environment. Just tell my investor audience out there what does Tony Lecantro look for when he's looking at stocks? Well, I'll, I'll go on to social media, uh, which can be a big no-no. So I'll put the code with a dollar sign into Twitter. I'll go on to Hot Copper. I'll then go to the annual report, look at the top 20. Then I think probably the best uh, throw at the stumps management can have is in the chairman's address. I'll then look at the share structure and I'll look at the exploration and- hold, hold, hold on one second. Why is the chairman's address important? Well, it's a free, it's, it's like um, a free hit in a T20 match. It's where the ASX allows the chairman to have a speech where they can show some enthusiasm and not endless jork tables. Right. And I think that's one of the most valuable sources of research you can have and, you know, you might have two pages of, you know, despair, excitement, but I've found the chairman's address through my career is one of the most valuable tools you can have where the ASX don't scrutinise every sentence. Yeah, because some of these announcements that come out are just, they're, they're, it, it's baffling for most people. So the chairman's address is, is, is ordinary language where people can understand. Okay, so chairman's address number one, what's number two? Um. Oh, look, I'd look at quarterly reports, how they're set out. Uh, are they professional? Do they cover all the projects? What, what, you know, are these top tier quarterly reports? I implore people watching to go read a quarterly from the likes of uh, Red Metal, RDM, which is a lead silver company with a lot of exploration projects. To me, that is the perfect quarterly report. So I think go back to the quarterly reports, look at the quarterly cash flow as well. 
the amount of money put into the ground as opposed to administration, I think is well worthwhile also. You don't want to see people on these massive salaries that are putting not a lot of money into the ground. Is that a warning sign for you, uh, Tony, if you're looking at a quarterly report and you see corporate overheads are very high? Is that a big uh, a red cross for you and you go, yeah, okay, that's a, that's a company that's not putting very much money into the ground? Because the way you find uh, discoveries is by the drill bit. You've got to start to put the money into the ground rather than to overheads. Is that a, is that a red, red cross for you if you see a lot of corporate overheads? Oh, certainly, certainly it can be. Um, I, I remember handing someone a copy of my book, which I wrote 21 years ago, and suggesting they look at Remilius. And he came back to me and said, well, management are paying themselves too much. This is the old team, mind you, before um, Zetna took over. But sometimes it is misleading. But, you know, you've got to look at the salary for a MD, CEO, a lot of them are going to range between 150 to 250,000 per annum. And you've got to look at the other people on the board. Not, not necessarily. It can, be, it can be a bit of a red flag if they're constantly diluting shareholders mm -hmm. to pay for these outlandish salaries. But to me, some of the best operators in the precious metal sector are people you consider as boffins. Um, they wear the khaki pants with the chambray shirts and they all look the same. They all talk the same. But, you know, these are the passionate people in the sector that can make you a lot of money through putting it into the ground. All right. What's the next thing that you would look for? So we've got chairman's address. We've got quarterly reports. We're looking at the overheads. We're looking at the costs of uh, the company and how much, you know, what percentage is going into the ground to find that discovery. What else do you look for, Tony? Uh, neurology, which is one word or one word with a hyphen. So if you're in the vicinity of a multi-million ounce discovery or mines, the market will, will pay attention if you're nearby. So I, I think if you're in a, you're close to operating mines, you do have a chance there once heat comes into the gold sector. Or in the case of Gold Road, which was previously in control of the Amana belt, if you have a totally virgin belt and then you make a huge discovery. So it's a combination of neurology and total control of a greenstone belt. So that, that, that's a combination of both those two, Kerry. And I also like to have a squiz at the top 20. And it takes experience. I'm not going to mention names, but you can work out who are flippers, who's for real, who's likely to buy more and who's just there for a one night stand. Uh, which is a very good point. Um, if people are investing in these companies, do you suggest that they, they be sticky investors or um, take profit off the table as they're going along? I'm just trying to mm. get a, a really good sense of how you make money for your clients in these times, Tony. Well, for my... 23 years of advising, uh, I've found that my clients, are they have an allergy to taking 10 times their money. They, when every a stock will go 10 times, they always want to hang out for more. Then that stock halves and then they're unhappy with the five bagger. So ideally what you want is like what I was faced with in May, 2007 where Remilius came out with 48 metres at 154 grams per tonne gold. Good. And then it was on for young and old. Oh, that was, that was amazing. I think I had my biggest month of brokerage ever. <laughs> and, you know, mums and dads that put 20, 25 grand in that stock became millionaires. But unfortunately, it's getting harder now. So you really have to hang on through all the phases. But once something goes five to 10 times, I'm suggesting take a bit of profit and let's look for the next one. But what my clients have been guilty of through all this time is not selling and everyone is doing their darndest to stuff it up. So, you know, if you've made five to 10 times your money, for goodness sake, just take some. He nearly said something very un-PC there, but he knows that I'm quite proper. Um, you are. <laughs> With, uh, with, with uh, taking profits and, and looking on for the next one, 
um, you'd leave some some around as well, would you, or, or or not? I mean, if you think it's a really good project, I mean, if it's a company that's got a good project, why wouldn't you leave some money on the table because it could keep going? I think from experience, uh, you learn what type of projects are going to get to that multi-million ounce potential. Who is really possessing the corporate now, similar to what Bill Beeman has, to go in and pick off assets at the bottom of the cycle, then turn it into a real company. So I think one aspect, Kerry, that a lot of investors miss is that for these gold companies to grow, you need a serious period of gold price weakness where the majors will throw out assets. So, oh, yeah. so people say, well, look, I could have held Northern Star from one cent to 17 bucks. Yeah, well, good luck with that because the Australian gold index lost two thirds of its value along the way. Right. So either you're in a coma or you're in jail. That's the only way you would have held on to, to that stock all the way or you lost your holder statement. So, um, <laughs> you know, investment success in hindsight, you know, it's 2020 vision. There's some companies out there at the moment um, that are looking at, you know, in and around uh, old workings. Do you think that's a good idea or do you prefer them to go out and, and, and look at ground that's not been um, gone over before? I... Wow, what a, what, a, what a bloody good question, Kerry. Um, I, I think companies that drill step out holes and have success should be rewarded. Companies that drill director's holes, as they're called, straight in, into the guts of the system, um, are going to get that hit when the market goes crazy. But um, I think, you know, looking at virgin areas, uh, stepping out, looking at strike lengths, I think that's where you're going to get your reward. When everyone's looking for a bandwagon, um, you know, why wouldn't you drill near a mine? Because that's where you're going to get your multiples. But I think courage in moving away from a mine area is ultimately going to be rewarded. And I think that's what's happening with one of my companies at the moment, Pack Gold uh, PGO. Yeah. Uh, and I, Alice Queen's up uh, 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 next. Um, uh, that's one that you've liked as well. Very, very interesting company, which has some Cadia-style uh, targets in New South Wales. They just released uh, their scoping study at Horn Island, which hasn't been that well received. Uh, it was only a modest increase in, in the resource. However, I think the market's probably been a little bit harsh on this company. And, you know, if I'm looking at stocks around that one set mark, I think that that's a company that certainly has multiple upside potential where you are buying it on, on the back foot. And we have had some success with Alice Quinn in the past. And I think that at the moment, one of the good things is uh, you're buying a little bit of bad news, Kerry. And, uh, you know, no doubt Andrew Buxton is going to say, well, hey, wait a sec, we've got the gold in the ground. We've got some Barbara looking after us. So often it's these one cent opportunities that, that make you the real money. So certainly one to watch at, at a very good price. My final question to you, Tony, is, uh, well, there's two final questions. Do you yes. think that right now we're at the bottom of the market? In other words, uh, gold has and silver haven't been looked at. They've, they've kind of been, as you say, uh, everyone's been looking at the sort of the EV stocks, the green technologies, all that sort of stuff, and they've, Kind of ignored gold. Do you think now is a good time to be taking a really good, good look at some of these equity stocks? I think being a permanent bull or being positive on the gold and silver sector cer certainly helps because we're, we're looking at a sector that's still largely unloved. Um, the youth aren't really into it, so I think there's enormous value in a lot of these companies that if you look at what they've got in the ground, uh, you look at the potential for sil the silver price to be uh, manipulated. Oh, I didn't say that, did I? Sorry. Um, you did. The silver you price did. to go up. <laughs> um, there's in incredible value there. And I think people will realise that once, you know, hydrogen is a long time off, uh, you know, lithium has recovered, but 
it's mainly bandwagon jumpers. So, you know, there's enormous value in some of these stocks. Majors, mid-tiers are going to be looking for acquisitions. So I think now really is the time to buy based on where we are in relation to inflation. Interest rates are going to go higher. Uh, bank interest is still going to be quite low. And I'm thinking that, you know, there's going to be a rush for physical gold and physical silver as a safe haven, really, Kerry, to maintain your purchasing power, which is still going to provide, you know, the right environment to make five to 10 times your money on some of these gold juniors and silver juniors. Um, you mentioned that the, the bigger boys looking at the juniors. Do you think that that, that is that the way it works, that the juniors, they go out and they, they do all the hard work and then the bigger boys come in and gobble them up? Is that, do you see that happening in the future? I think that that trend is going to continue. And, you know, I, I think that these companies, a lot of them, if you can come up with a million ounce discovery and if you can walk for, you know, $150, $200 million, why the hell not? And then go out and do it all again. And that's what I like about the, the true exploration people, uh, those that have been in companies that have been taken over that want to go and do it again. And you've only got to look at people like Chris Cairns from Integra, into Stavely, into another gold company, and hopefully it's a three-step. All right, the final, uh, the final advice to our investors, new, old, sophisticated, unsophisticated goes to you, Tony. What is your advice to them right now? They've heard from a dozen or so companies. We've still got a, a few to go this afternoon. Uh, what, what is your best advice to them right now as to how to uh, grow and protect their wealth in these very unusual and potentially volatile times. Just um, don't become a junkie. Don't get addicted to rubbish. Don't worry about the share price. Don't refresh your phone every five to 10 minutes. Invest in quality, and I mean the word invest, and think that gold price weakness at some point is going to be your friend. Don't buy a stock at 20 cents and become comfortable when it sits at 22, when it reaches cruising altitude. So it's a bit of a combination of things that the real gold bohemus that come from juniors are actually built through periods of weakness. But if you get lucky with a massive gold discovery, uh, take, take some off the table. But you know, I think it's paramount that you stay focused you stay positive and you pay attention to the companies presenting, Kerry, because what you've provided for many years is just an invaluable service to investors. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. And as Tony said right uh, at the beginning there as well, read the chairman's address, have a look at the quarterly report, get educated, don't well, don't have a listen to what people are saying on social media because that's what we call pumping and dumping. Uh, you must, must, must do your own research. And the best way to do that is to listen to the presentations today, to understand what they're doing. And one of the great things is all of these uh, managing directors, CEOs, they're more than happy to answer questions. And there's no, there's no stupid questions in this industry. They love to answer questions and, and they're very comfortable with talking to shareholders. Tony LeCantro, really appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us at the Virtual Gold Conference. Thanks for the opportunity, Kerry, as always. <laughs>